of 1972 was J. Edgar Hoover. One of his admirers commented, For 25 years, from the time I came to Washington as a freshman congressman, he's been one of my closest personal friends and advisors. And every American, in my opinion, owes J. Edgar Hoover a great debt for building the FBI into the finest law enforcement organization in the entire world. I have ordered that all the flags on government buildings be flown at half-mast. Edgar Hoover, because of his indomitable courage against sometimes very vicious attack, has made certain that the flag of the FBI will always fly high. Like all elections, that of 1972 got off to an early start. But unlike some others, it was a crowded field for the Democrats. Surprise candidate was Shirley Chisholm, congresswoman from Brooklyn. I am not the candidate of black America, although I am black and proud. I am not the candidate of the women's movement of this country, although I am a woman, and I'm equally proud of that. I stand here now without endorsement from many big-name politicians or celebrities or any other kind of prop, I am the candidate of the people of America. Another contender was Senator Edward Muskie. I shall enter each of the first eight primaries in New Hampshire, Florida, Illinois, Wisconsin, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, and Ohio and as many of the others as my time and resources allow. A major primary in 1972 was in Florida on March 14th, where the issues were busing, law and order, taxes, and party solidarity. My dear friends, this is no new speech for Hubert Humphrey. I have not only been talking this way, I've been living this way, I've been fighting this way, and I need your help. On the day of March 14 now, I want you to back your champion. I have been your champion. Now stand up and fight with me and vote for me. Thank you. That was Hubert Humphrey. John Lindsay also ran in Florida. So did Henry Jackson and George McGovern, who plugged for peace. We would be in a position, once we've terminated hostilities by a withdrawal date of that kind, we'd be in a position then under the uh, Geneva Agreements uh, to take action even as extreme as, uh, as very intense military action against North Vietnam. I personally think that's an academic question. I think we would unlock the negotiations if we would set a definite deadline. Winner in Florida was George Wallace, who then barnstormed the country for two full months before finding himself in Laurel, Maryland, in a shopping center, where he spoke on one of his favorite themes. And the people of both races in this country are fed up with the fact that if somebody gets knocked in the head when they walk away from the shopping center today, the person who gets knocked in the head, that knocks you in the head, is out of jail by some federal judge's edict before you get to the hospital. Before you get to the hospital. And on Monday, and on Monday, they'll blame a policeman about the whole thing. They'll say he's the blame for it. But while you folks are working and paying the taxes and holding the country together, you've got to be able to walk the streets safely. And I want to tell you, thugs have taken over the streets of every large city in the United States. And I want you to send them a message through George Wallace that we want the streets again safe for the average citizen. Within minutes, Wallace himself was gunned down by an assassin before crowds of horrified supporters. An FBI man made this statement. The suspect's name is Arthur Herman Bremer, B-R-E-M-E-R. -E -E Last known address, 2433 West Michigan Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Date of birth, 8-21-1950. As the year ended, Wallace was still in a wheelchair, paralyzed by the bullet wound in his spine. At the Democratic Convention in Miami, July 10th to 14th, the party's choice was introduced by Ted Kennedy, who flew down from Hyannis to speak, but refused to run. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy 
high good with brotherhood from sea to signing sea. That prayer is our promise. And how fortunate we are, how fortunate is America to find that promise in the wise and skillful hands of our leader, the senator from South Dakota and the next president of the United States, George McGovern. The convention was remarkable for its vocal minorities, blacks, young people, and women, all demanding to be heard and get a plank in the platform. Choice of the vice presidential candidate was the best kept, perhaps the only, secret. And surely I did not expect to stand before you tonight as the Democratic nominee for vice president of the United States. It is thus with deep humility in the face of the responsibility you've asked me to assume, and with profound gratitude to you, the delegates, and of course to Senator McGovern, that I accept your nomination. The rise of Senator Thomas Eagleton of Missouri was sudden. So also was his fall, when newsmen learned more about his past than was known at the convention. On three occasions in my life, I have voluntarily gone into hospital as a result of nervous exhaustion and fatigue. Senator McGovern defended him at first. Well, I've watched him at very close range in the United States Senate for the last uh, four years. As far as I'm concerned, there's no member of that Senate who is any sounder in uh, mind, uh, body, and spirit than Tom Eagleton. But party pressure was strong and another running mate was chosen, the wealthy but economy-minded Sergeant Shriver, who jumped into the fight with great enthusiasm. Hamburger's gone up 25%. Instant coffee's up 20%. Hot, hot dogs are up 15%. What did? Chicken has gone up. What soup is up? I'll tell you something. Pretzels are up 12%. Bread is up. And what's worse? Beer is up 22%. Two weeks after the Democrats, the GOP held its convention, also in Miami, but without apparent surprises or discord. The vice president, too, was renominated. I personally am delighted to be a part of the ticket. I think the president's programs in foreign policy and economic policy and the domestic areas have been extremely effective for the country. Delighted to see how the foreign policies have brought about a change, a diminution in uh, world tensions. I intend to uh, carry the president's record to the country in every state. Another interpretation of the record of the past four years came from Ted Kennedy. We know the record of this administration on every issue, and the four horsemen of ancient name bore the names of war and pestilence, famine and death. And now in the government of Richard Nixon, the four horsemen are riding again, and they bear the names of incompetence, favoritism, secrecy, and corruption. Another feature of the 1972 election was organized labor's lack of participation. George Meany explained the reasons. There is a division among the rank and file of our organization, and rather than, rather than try to solve that division at the top, we're giving them a job on which they can agree and let them do as they like on the presidential candidate. We're giving him a job to try to get Labor's friends back on Capitol Hill. As the weeks went by, George McGovern attacked the administration on ever broader counts. We are confronted, in short, with both a moral and a constitutional crisis of unprecedented dimensions. Ambitious men come and go, but a free society might never recover from a sustained assault on its most basic institutions. And one can only ask, if this has happened in four years, to what lengths would the same leadership go in another four years, once freed of the restraints of facing the people for re-election? We must remember that freedom lost is seldom restored. The election of November 7th was called the greatest political victory in American history, 
and a beaming president acknowledged the landslide vote. This for me is rather unusual. I've never known a national election when I would be able to go to bed earlier than tonight. <laughs> It seemed that history and 60% of the American voters approved of the policies and accomplishments of Richard Nixon. The promise of four more years dominated the closing months of the dramatic, crowded year, the 196th of our republic, the year that was 1972.